Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Cambridge 540p which is a phono pre-amplifier stroke equaliser and this is intended to be used with a movie magnet type cartridge uh, for a record player. So general specifications and sort of background so this um, phono pre-amplifier was launched in about 2005 and extremely popular and there's also a, a 560p and then uh, later uh, Cambridge also uh, produced a uh, 651 uh, series as well so it had the ability then to switch between a moving coil and also a moving magnet when you look at general specifications output power is at 5 watts and overall gain at 1 kilohertz is 39 dB the input impedance this is standard whenever you see a moving magnet type cartridge so this is 47 K and then the nominal output millivoltage is 3.35 millivolts and then total harmonic distortion and the frequency range is, is standard so that's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz but good specifications here at 0.009 percent so that's extremely good and then when you look at the RIAA curve accuracy again very very good specification at 0.65 dB 25 to 20 kilohertz um, what I've also done as well is I've just put in the repair description underneath the video a link which then covers another tutorial which I did some months back which covered um, moving magnet and moving coil type uh, cartridges and also the production of vinyl so that will give you some insight with regard to the uh, curve accuracy that we mentioned a moment ago and then weight and then dimension so because it's a small unit it's only a pre-amplifier not a, a, a main audio amplifier it's 0 0.8 kilograms and then in terms of dimensions you're looking at 215 millimeters wide by 133 millimeters deep and then 46 uh, millimeters high and overall the, these units do produce a high quality sound and still very very popular and you can pick these up from auction websites at a relatively low price um, so for myself straightforward repair here but really a common type of repair as we go through the most common issue that you see with this preamplifier comes about with regard to the DC stroke AC power supply and what I'm referring to here is when you purchase it it's provided with a Cambridge audio AC power supply which is 12 volts and the unit itself takes 0 0.5 amps overall now I don't know how this happens but at some point in time the original power supply appears to get disconnected from from the unit right so when they come up like on auction websites or even for example you get reports where they have failed commonly what you'll receive is no power supply at all with the unit or you'll receive it with a DC power supply so someone has gone off and purchased a replacement power supply but has automatically assumed that it's DC and it isn't not at all and what I show in the video which is the first part of this is the power supply circuit and the common issue that occurs here so the AC power supply as we mentioned should be 12 volts 500 milliamps if you connect a 12 volt DC power supply to it what happens then is that the center pin on the socket will then carry the plus supply and it will then put positive 12 volts on the negative side of one of the smoothing capacitors C1 which is a 220 microfarad 50 volt capacitor and you see this in the video what has happened is because it's been subjected to DC voltage reverse polarity the top of the capacitor has bulged and to the point where I also show you the ESR meter and once the capacitor was removed it reads open circuit so the capacitor is completely failed because of this reverse voltage and it is a very very common issue I've seen over the years many of these preamplifiers come in with exactly this fault and that's that's the thing what you don't see on this unit which was good there's none of this horrible brown glue which just dissolves some of the components and then goes slightly to conductive so overall a very very easy repair so it's just a simple matter of looking at C1 and then as I said you could see that it was physically beginning to vent and then when I measured it you know it was open 
what I do is I also uh, source a replacement power supply but I don't tend to look for a 500 milliamp unit I'll just provide a 12 volt AC unit at one uh, 1000 milliamps or one amp and that's that's more than good enough now when we look at the um, LED on the front and I'm sort of showing this in the video I never did quite understand this but Cambridge also audio seemed to use it was almost like a like a black tar so no matter how careful you are when you take off the outer cover for the preamp you unplug as I'm showing here the LED and then this black gunk you know it, the the LED sort of just drops off the case so you're always in the situation whenever you work on these that you've got to put the LED back through the small hole and then try and secure it so I'll show here a before and after shot so before with a black tar whatever it is and then after that what I use is a quick drying epoxy resin which I'm just having two tubes mix up and then I just use a small flat blade screwdriver just to spread it just around there and if you keep it in the same position for about sort of 10-15 minutes that will go you know quite solid then and that's that's a good you know repair and then longevity in it as well and then the other thing that I'm showing in the video, when you spin the amplifier or the preamplifier over, you can see on here where the original felt feet were. So I'll show you that you can buy these felt feet just in you know, packs. I've got a broad range of them. And then just make sure that there's no residual glue from the original ones. And they fit exactly. So I can show you here that, you know, sort of finishing off this repair, I just put on the felt feet, you know, and that, that's good, right? So it doesn't scratch anything, you know, if you're stacking it on to your you know, sort of stack system or maybe you've got it, you know, close to your record player, you know, you have that degree of protection then. And then really to complete this pre-amplifier repair, the only other thing, of course, was just to carry out a full functional check. But, um, you know, there's, no, there's nothing in that really. You know, the, the the issue here was the capacitor and then just the LED that just had to be bonded back as well. The the other part probably to mention, with the main board, it clips into these plastic standoff pillars. Uh, sometimes what you can find is during manufacture they're extremely tight. So no matter even if you get a pair of you know, long nose pliers and squeeze them in just to release, uh, you tend to find one side or or the other. You know, really really tightly held in position then and you kind of think oh you know is this board going to crack but there's enough flex on there and what i would say is if it doesn't sort of lift on the first attempt you know go back again and then you know try and squeeze it even harder and then you should be able to just pop that edge pin off then an overall build quality for these preamps is very good you know there's no sort of um poor board layout or anything like that so what i would recommend you know if you can source them by all means go pick them up you know they're, they're well worth it and then that really brings us to the end of this repair tutorial so again if you have any questions by all means email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com and i'll be more than happy to come back and then provide you any guidance or assistance that you may require and uh, i appreciate you stopping by and then listening until the next time cheers bye bye